Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us in today's webinar with the theme, Do you want to speak English like a native speaker? It sounds interesting, right? When we can speak, when we can speak like a native speaker, of course, we will know it deeply with me, Faisal Idris Muyagati, as your moderator. Now, but now, before we go into the next step, I would like to inform you that for the present list, you can type your name on the chat box. And here are the presenters. For the presenters, please turn on your camera. For all presenters, please turn on your camera. All right. For the first presenter is Erika Fevi Liswanika. And next is Salsa Bilabakis. Then Felda Fauzia. And Raihan Rijaldi. Rafli Al Muzaki. And the last is Astri Sulastri. In this webinar, we have mentioned the rules. First, this is an oral presentation only, so no written materials could be delivered. And I suggest all participants to take notes, all right? And then this webinar is full English forum session, so all activities will be delivered in English. Next, all participants must turn off the camera and audio during the presentation. And then the presentation will be held for about five minutes for each presenter. All the presenters will present the matter in turn. And then And then Q&A session will come after the whole presentation. You may start asking questions since the presentation is started on the chat box. Okay. We just to, we just choose two questions and rest question will be answered through email. All right. Now without any further ado we are going to the first presenter, Erika Fevi Liswanika, with the topic, Learn Basic English Pronunciation. Time is yours. <clears throat> okay. Okay, thank you for giving me the time and opportunity. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Erika Vilswanika and I would like to share about uh, about learn basic English pronunciation. Uh, before that, uh, we need to know how pronunciation how we say words or refers to the way uh, in which making the sounds of words. Okay. Uh, most people speak uh, the day speak the dialect. Uh, of standard English, uh, an, an accent that belongs to of the country they come from or they live in. Uh, but pronunciation help us to speak like a native speaker. Okay. Uh, and the next, uh, I would like to explain how to produce sounds of words. Um, it is a uh, phonetic and phonology. Okay, there are three human anatomy in uh, of project sounds of words. 
the first is stomach and second is lungs and third okay. the, the way it works to pronounce words and to produce the sounds is we push we push air from the lungs up through the third and vocal cord and through our mouth past the tongue and out of our teeth and our lips okay uh, it is uh, commonly because it takes what it's need one semester to discuss is discuss it in in, in detail uh, the muscle of our mouth uh, the muscles of our mouth tongue and lips if we can control if we can control the shape or our mouth and the and the flow of air uh, we can work correctly so uh, the other people other people can uh, can understand understand us more easily uh, speakers of different language tend to develop different muscles of the mouth pro for pronunciation when we speak a foreign language our muscles may not be well be well pronounced pronunciation uh, and we will find pronunciation more difficult by the pronunciation our muscles develop and pronunciation improve as well as creating correct vowel and consonant using the there are there are other important aspects of pronunciation they are of the words and second sentence sentence stress upon certain words in sentence and third intonation the, ri the rise and fall of our in, in yes no yes no question and wh question like uh, do you like pizza? Why do you like pizza? Rise and fall voice. Okay. Here I provide the chart of letters uh, and how to pronounce it. Can you see? Okay. Uh, this is most basic thing maybe even kinder kindergarten okay here we go a b c d e f g h i j k l n o p Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Okay. Uh, here there is a col there is a column indicating that the letters uh, should should be read uh, rather long, like B C. Yes, rather long. Okay. Then next. We move on to the high level. Uh, beside the 26, 26 letters in English, there are also like also this letter. I will try to pronounce it. You can see. Oh, sorry. Uh, e for read. E for sip. U for book. U for two. E for here. A for day. 
E for men. E for America. America. E for word. E for short. E for tour. O for boy. O for girl. E for cap. A for bat. A for park. A for A for wear. I for my. L for hat. P for P. B for bed. T for time. D for do. J for for coach, J for judge, K for kilo, G for go, F for five, five, V for vet, S for sing, D for the, S for six, Z for zoo, Sh for short. Z for casual. M for milk. N for no. N for sing. H for hello. L for leave. R for read. W for window. And the last is Y yeah for yes. Okay. Um, that's all for me. Thank you for giving me the time and opportunity to explain the material. Uh, actually, I still have have a lot to say, but the time is limited. So I uh, return it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Erika, for the great presentation. Okay. For the next presentation is Sasa Bila Balkis with the topic Let's Play with Minimal Pairs. Time is yours. All right. Sasa Bila Balkis, time is yours. Cek, cek. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm sorry, guys. This error technical. Okay. That's next. Uh, Assalamualaikum. No, wait, wait. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor for me to be able to speak in front of all of you who are extraordinary. I'm sorry if my video just turned off and then turned on again. There's trouble on my PC, so just next. All right. Okay. I'm Salsa Bilabakis, and I will be talking about minimal pairs. And then, yeah, of course, you want to speak like a native English speaker, right? Speaking like a native English speaker is uh, certainly our dream as an English learner. But for sure, before speak like a native speaker, those are stages we need to master beforehand. And one of it is minimal pairs, which is my topic for now. And by the way, did you already know about minimal pairs before? For those of you who know about it, thank you so much. And to those of you who have not, please don't worry because before we next to the ne we next to the play with minimal pairs, we let's get to know minimal pairs first, okay? So minimal pairs is pair of a word and it may usually confuse us as English learners. 
And what do you think about that? And how can it may confuse us? Okay, did you get it, guys? Can you hear my sound? And what do you think? How it can confuse us? Okay, Faisal, I see. Next. It may confuse us because minimal pair, it has only single sounds with different consonant or vowels, of course. But in the more simple things, in simple way, why it always or sometimes can confuse us? Because a minimal pair has similar sound but different meaning, like that. Okay, for next, so what should we do next? And after that, so before entered to this minimal pace level, we should know about vowel and consonant first because it will easier us to compare between vowel and consonant in minimal pairs. And then it is a role for this before we play with minimal pairs, okay? Okay, so after that, I will give you some example in here that I have prepared. Hope you can see it, guys. Here are minimal pairs E and E, okay? So, here are minimal pairs E and E. Shorter E and a longer E. This is chip and chip. So, the tips is for the shorter E, you just can E, E. But for the longer E, you can do a little bit smile at E. So it becomes cheap and cheap like that. So next to the next example, minimal pairs A, A and E, like bag and big, bell and bill, check and check. Okay. Next, here. Minimal pairs, A and A, like back and bake, then bell, bail, then blade, like that. Although the difference is very slight, but it could influence the meaning of the word. So just be careful in every word in English. Okay, so after the list of examples that I have presented to all of you, here are the more adorable examples need to be considered because, yeah, let me read a conversation which has error pronunciation and just listen carefully and let's find out where is the error, okay? Okay, here I will read the conversation and listen carefully, please. My son needs another beer, you know, to sleep better. What do you mean? A beer? Well, I'm sure it would make him relax. He is too young to have one. He just five. Young? Of course not. He already has two. He has two beers? That would make me sleepy and I'm 35. No, I mean beer a teddy. That's bear, not beer. Did you get it, guys? So, yeah. Did you find where is the error pronunciation in it? And the error pronunciation is like this. Bear and beer. Bear and beer, okay? Yeah, well, that's kind of a fun way, fun way, fun way when we learn pronunciation through minimal pairs. And did you, did you know when we learning pronunciation with minimal pairs, those are benefits on it for sure. And it is for distinguish the English sound that has similar sound obscurely by pairing two words. And then, so it could be easier, easy to know where the sounds pronounced contactively or not because a wrong pronunciation could be misunderstanding and obstruct the communication fluency. And a technique of a minimal pairs is an interesting activity because it is considered too easy to understand and it is effective for us. And next, yeah, uh, 
besides we would know many english words we will and besides we can good have a good pronunciation learning pronunciation with minimal practice could help us to enrich our vocabulary so thank you wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh all right waalaikumsalam abil uh, thank you for the presentation it was amazing we can use minimal pairs for practice for exercising, I mean, for exercising our pronunciation skill. Before before we are going to the next presenter, I would like to remind you that uh, please type your name on the chat box for the present list. All right. Uh, for the next presenter is Felda Fauzia with the topic "Funny Way with Tongue Twister." It's the time is yours. Felda, can you hear my voice? Right, maybe there is an error. So we will going to the next um is the presenter. Uh, he is Raihan Rijaldi with the topic with together American English versus British English. Time is yours, Raihan. Um, Oke, okay. uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um, Hello everyone I'm Muhammad Rayhan Rizali And I'm from EDSA, Siliwang University And, uh, and now I'm in the fourth semester In my university And uh, now I would like to share to all of you uh, Which is better one uh, It is American English or um, British English and so I would like to tell to all of you um, uh, the definition uh, uh, the, the definition from American English what American English is and what uh, British accent is and the little bit history from their birth okay so American English um, sometimes called as uh, United States English or United States and it is originally from uh, United Kingdom and it is the set, the set of varieties of the English native to the United States. Currently, American English is the most influential form of English worldwide. Okay, um, and this is the uh, definition of British English, British accent is, British English or British accent is uh, the standard di dialect of the English language as spoken and uh, written in the United Kingdom and it is 
are originally from United Kingdom and originally from British British people are using um, British accent usually in their daily, daily life and Frisian exists in formal written English in the uh, United Kingdom for example uh, the adjective we is almost exclusively used in part uh, of Scotland um, North East England uh, Ireland and occasionally uh, Yorkshire where whereas little is a predominant elsewhere uh, okay American English and British English often differ at the level of phonology, phonetics, vocabulary, and uh, too much lesser accent, grammar, and orthography. Um, the first large American dictionary, an American dictionary of the English language uh, known as um, Webster Dictionary, you can search on the internet, uh, Webster Dictionary, and it is, uh, was written by uh, Noah Webster in 1000, um uh, 828 codifying several of this spelling okay this is the um the example that i uh, will tell to you the example of american accent how um how uh, american people are usually speak in their daily life okay unrounded vowels in such words as rod and lot r o d and l o t they are pronounced as rod so uh, O sound is changing into A, O become become A, so it is become rod and lot, not rod and lot. And uh, the short A uh, sound become diphthongs before the nasal consonant. Uh, for example, uh, man, cat. Okay. The next is yet dropping in such words as sweet become suit, new become new. So it is more uh, more what more strike into the uh, word so it is become new and new so uh, that is the uh, example of american accent so we move to the example of um, british accent so the example is i have a bottle the t sound in american accent is usually uh, pronounced by the sound the is become the sound but in british accent it is become um the sound hard the sound so it is become i have a bottle bottle so the sound is more hard to say so it is become bottle bottle okay um the next is our sound at the end of the word is uh, was disappeared it is become uh, like for example um uh, i see the car the car the car in american accent we usually spell it by car car um, with our sound at the end but in British accent, the R sound was disappeared. It has become car. I see the car, the car. Uh, so that is the example and the definition and a little bit um, history of American English and British English. So um, in short, that uh, talking about uh, which is better between uh, American English and British English is, um, it depends on the person who used the language. Uh, if our interlocutor is using by um, British accent, so then we try to use British accent. Uh, and then vice versa, if our interlocutor is using um, uh, American accent, we use it, we're using American accent to easily uh, communicate in which others, which it others. And how do we know uh, the person is communicating using is British through the expressing? The expressing of his mouth of the mouth so we will know um their mouth what they will speak it is american accent or british accent because the logat logat what is it logat um um what will what uh, they speak about um it is by british accent or american accent so um, so which one is better uh, from my um, field point is neither. Uh, they both uh, serve a purpose and they are both uh, uh, consistent within their rules. American accent are using their uh, own rules. British accent are uh, using their own rule. British accent are using their own rules and they can raise classroom uh, issues, but these uh, can be uh, dealt with as described in the previous section. The British versus American accent Competition is uh, pretty much that same as we compare Coca-Cola and Pepsi. 
So uh, there will be people who drink either because they like uh, cola drinks and those who prefer one over the other. So neither one is better. They are the same but different. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All right. Thank you, Raihan, for a great presentation. So I think Felda is ready for giving her presentation. So for the next presenter is Felda Fauzia with the topic, Funny Way with Mineral Pairs. Time is yours. I'm so sorry, Felda. Uh, has a trouble. So for the next presenter is Rafli, Mo Rafli Al Muzaki with the material about comparing dialect and accent. Time is yours. Roughly, can you hear my voice? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is trouble oh, right. <laughs> on my device. Thank you for reminding me. And thank you for moderator to, who gave me the opportunity to become a presenter in this webinar. Now, I would like to tell you about comparing uh, accents versus dialects. Uh, do you know what an accent is and do you know what dialect is? Now, I will tell you about the definition of accents and dialects. First is accent. According to Betty Birner from Linguistic Society of America said, accent is the way you sound when you speak. Basically, it means speaking English but using the sounds, intonation and rhythm of your own native tongue. As an example, an American might pronounce the word hello by speaking the uh sound. Hello in British accents might pronounce the word hello without speaking the uh sound. Hello. Hello. This is the still same word but just spoken with a different accent. And second is dialect. According to Nordquist 2019, a dialect is a regional or social variety of a language distinguished by pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary. Dialects are usually formed around particular regions. However, they, in addition to geographical variation, the social background of a speaker will also influence the variety of English that person speaks. Two children may grow up in the same Yorkshire village, but if one is born into a wealthy family and attends an expensive private school, 
while the other is born into a less well-off family and attends to uh, and attends the local state school, the two are likely to end up speaking rather different varieties of English. It is this combination of regional and social variation that called as dialect. Now I will tell you about the example of American dialect. There are two types of American dialect in Northern and Southern. In a Northern, American might say hello, but in Southern American might say howdy, howdy. And dialects in British. In the British, there are standard form. I'm not going to school today. But in the British dialects, I ain't going to school today. And second, in the standard form, she doesn't understand. But in British, she don't, don't understand. And the third is, would you like a cheese cob? Cob is a dialect word in parts of the north of England and, and it means bread roll. So it means, would you like a cheese bread roll? And now, accents versus dialects. Dialect and accent are two different aspects of language. However, there are some overlaps. An accent is also specific to a region. In English, there might be an American, British, or Australian accent. An accent is an inflection that occurs with word pronunciation. A dialect is entirely different words or ways of co communicating altogether. Dialect goes beyond mere pronunciation. That's all from me. Thank you very much. All right, roughly that was amazing. So because Felda Fauzia is still in trouble. So for the next presenter is Astri Sulastri with the topic, why do you want to speak English like an English native speaker? Time is yours. <laughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. This is an honor to meet you in this special day. So let's move to the next topic. With me as Tri Sulastri, we will discuss about why we why do we want to speak like an English native speaker. It's every English student's dream being able to speak and sound like a native speaker. A native speaker of English refers to someone who has learned and used English from early childhood. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is the speaker only language, but it means it has been the primary means of concept formation and communication. Chomsky concludes that everyone is a native speaker of the particular language states that the person ground in his or her mind. So, speaking like a native means more than just knowing vocabulary and grammar. Knowing instantly what slang means, what cultural references mean, how to reduce syntax to a bare minimum, and still convey precise meaning. All these things and more are what constitute native speech. A native speaker is more than fluent. He correctly and easily uses his first language in a proper sense as well as understand and can use collo colloquialism, colloquialism, idioms, and slang with equal fluency. Analyst, all languages are spoken with equal strength. The term bilingual really doesn't apply. Uh, learning a new language is tough. The words, the grammar, and the pronunciation often take a toll on our minds. 
it is fairly common for a language learner Native pronunciation is hard. Why? The answer lies in the fact that even before we are born, our ears and brain get used to hearing. By the time we reach our as adult, <coughs> it becomes increasingly difficult for our brain and ear to get used to a different accent. To sound, more, to sound more like native, extensive practice of phonemes and pronunciation can be done. However, the chance of sounding like a native speaker are lower but not impossible. So, is it possible for an English learner to speak like a native speaker? I would say it depends. It depends largely on what you mean like a native speaker specifically. In terms of accent and cadence, yes, it is possible to become fluent enough. However, slang, idiom, colloquialism, and like regional dialect require a much more difficult to master. Most people who learn a second language after puberty will have an accent. Before that age, people can learn a language so well that they speak like a native. So, in this case, the younger better. It will possible if, if we really want to do it, although we will need lots of practice and time. As Kalais Reno explains, the number of years it takes to be fluent for younger people entering K-12 schools, it generally takes seven until 10 years to reach the same level of overall achievement, fluency, vocabulary, grammar, and others, as the average student. However, we all learn language for a lifetime. Even after 10 years, there are things that we will not know. Sounding like a native must never be a goal or hindrance in language learning. The primary objective of a language is to ease communication and the exchange of ideas. Having a distinct accent can sometimes give you an edge, especially, especially when you speak the language well. Even languages have regional accent, and most natives are very proud of the accent. Therefore, just concentrate on the correct sentence, construction, and right pronunciation. The accent will take care of itself in its own sweet little time. I think that's enough from me. Thank you for your great attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was amazing. Um, I think because Felda is still in trouble. We'll wait um, about two minutes. Start from now. <clears throat> so, um, I would like to remind uh, I would like to, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I would like to remind the party, the participants, um, please type your name on the chat box because it was it for uh, the prison list. And uh, you can ask on the chat box like like uh, these questions.
All right, time is over. And um, I do apologize. Uh, I think Felda can't give her presentation because she has, she is still in trouble. So now we are going to the next session. It is uh, the Q&A session. <clears throat> but before starting the Q&A session, I would like to remind you that you can give the question on the chat box. Questions should be asked in English. We just choose two questions uh, in this webinar forum. And for the rest, question will be answered through email. To all presenters, you are pleased to turn on your camera and audio. All presenters, please turn on video, camera, and audio. <clears throat> All presenters, can you hear me? All right. And turn on camera and audio. Okay. Oh, here I am. All right. We have two questions. For the first question, question is what accent should be learned by the students and why? And the next question is how important is to understand the way in which the speech sounds produced? So for, for all the presenters, it's for you to answer the questions. Who gonna who gonna be the first? Well, the first question will answer the question. Uh, me, sir, roughly. All right, so, roughly, please. I would like to try to answer Mrs. Agis question. What accent should be learned by the students and why? In my opinion, I think uh, American accent will be suitable for the student. Why? Because American more than uh, what is it? More than easy. More uh, American accent is easier than British accent, and and also is easy to learn by almost all of all 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 age. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, most for uh maybe for the old old men or the children and that 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 that, that is my answer so may i answer? all right my hand thank uh, you yeah. roughly for the answer to the question all right Rayhan. you're welcome so um i'm totally agree with um roughly answer that uh, American accent is uh, easier to learn uh, beside uh, British accent because um, as we usually uh, what is it as we usually uh, speak at the class in our in our campus that our friends uh, uh, even us that usually talking in American accent usually uh, communicating uh, in American accent because um, uh, British accent and uh, another accent that uh, we uh, 
we don't totally know that uh, they have uh, more uh, more deep or deeper um, what is it deeper phonology diphthong uh, act, uh, pronunciation because of that that uh, uh, our that in campus that usually speaking in American accent because uh, it feel that uh, easier to us to um, spell by um, American accent that uh, as I um, as, as I tell to you before that uh, British accent is uh, totally different like our sound at the end of the word is have to disappear that it is very hard to me that learn British accent because uh, sometime that sometime that I uh, usually uh, what is it sometime that I try to um, speak British it is hard very hard to me to learn British English or uh, another accent that is for me I think uh, American accent is should be learned and should be mastered by um, student in in junior high school, junior high school, senior high school, or in university. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> right. Thank you, Raihan. And for the next question, or maybe you have another opinion for number one. Mm, not yet. <laughs> Another presenter. <clears throat> How important. I'm sorry. So Sabila is turned on her audio. Maybe you have another option, another opinion. Yeah. I mean. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay, I try to answer, answer based on my opinion, right? Uh, I think uh, don't don't think that American is easier than British accent uh, because, in my opinion, if we if we think British accent is harder than American accent, we should learn more about British accent. Okay, uh, don't the we, we don't we don't care about surrounding us who we using American accent in our daily activity but if we learn it I think we should learn more about British accent thank you all right thank you Sasabil Balkis and for the second question who will answer We'll answer the second question. All right, for the second question, we are still in discussing uh i think we will discuss in in five minutes in five minutes it is For the presenters, if you are ready for answer the question, you are pleased. Yes. 
Erika Do you want to answer the question? Yes. All right. I will try um, to answer the question. All right. Turn on your camera, please. Okay. All right. Erika, please. Okay, uh, because we take the because we take the title. Do you wanna speak? Do, do you wanna speak English like native speaker? So uh, we we have to we should as much as possible say word by word, letters by letters, uh, correctly like uh, standard English. I think uh, so. Uh, the the other can understand understand us more easily and uh, uh, we can avoid miscommunication uh, before we before we, before we learn pronunciation we should know uh, how how the sounds of words use so we should learn about phonetic and phonology. That's all for me. Maybe the other presentation have uh, any answer. All right, thank you, Erika. All right, Balkis and Sasabila. Okay, I try to answer this on my too. Uh, how important it is to understand the way in which the speech sound pitches? I think it is really important because uh, if we want to produce a sound or a word, we just remember or remind how the way the, the way speech sounds produce like that. But but sometimes it it could disturb us when we want to produce a word. We just focus on the way how it produces, so it 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 based and depends for ourselves like that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sasabila, for the answer. Okay. Is it clear enough? I think it's clear enough. Uh -oh. So yeah, I think it's clear enough. Everyone, finally we are in the end of this webinar session. I hope the answers can reach participants' ex expectation. So, all right. <clears throat> I can conclude that we can use some tricks such as minimal pairs and tongue twister to exercise our pronunciation. Then, um, Knowing the accent and dialect are important for us to choose one as a reference. Accent is not the aim, as long as our sentence construction is good and make the communication easier, that's fine. American accent is easier to pronounce, so we think we have to learn more about British accent. And learning the way in which the speech sound produced is important. When, when we producing a word, we have to consider the way how speech sound produced because it is the key to pronounce it.
I hope also the materials that given in this webinar can be beneficial for us. Okay, to close this webinar, I want to give my biggest appreciation to all participants and all gorgeous presenters and let's recite Alhamdulillah together. Alhamdulillah, Hirobi Alameen. Thank you for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.